Uh, thanks, everyone, and uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Spencer Wong, um, and it's my pleasure to uh, represent Netflix at this year's uh, Global Connected um, Summit. Um, thanks. Um, it's great to be here in D.C. Appreciate you guys taking time out of your busy schedule to hear the story and to uh, take a break from the James Comey, uh, Comey uh, testimony uh, to hear it. So um, you may be a little bit confused by uh, my title, um, but like many people on Netflix, uh, I actually have multiple jobs. So on one hand, uh, I do. Uh, I am part of the finance team, and I head up our uh, relationships with uh, Wall Street. Uh, but I also work uh, in business development, where our uh, where I lead our out of home uh, initiatives, and that's specifically our partnerships with uh, airlines, uh, hotel operators, as well as uh, cru cruise operators as well. Um, so in terms of uh, today's presentation, I'm going to cover uh, a couple topics: a quick overview of Netflix, followed by um, uh, our in uh, description of our in-flight program and then um, some specific learnings from our initial uh, partnerships with airlines. And then if we have time, happy to open it up for some questions uh, from, from the audience. So in terms of the um, overview of Netflix, I don't want to take it for granted that um, people in this room are familiar with the company. So maybe a quick show of hands, uh, how many in the audience are members of Netflix? Okay, not, not bad. So looks like about 60%. So that's a little bit higher than our penetration in, uh, uh, in the U.S. Uh, currently. So, so that's not bad. Um, that's a good sign. So um, I'll start with maybe the big picture sort of idea behind what we're trying to accomplish on Netflix. And, you know, the basic concept is that we're really in the early stages of a big shift in the world of television. And just as the broadcast um, television um, business evolved into cable TV over a 30 year period, uh, we're really in the early days we think of the evolution from linear TV to internet TV, um, the hallmark of which is uh, on-demand viewing, which just means you get to watch as a consumer what you want, when you want, uh, wherever you want on um, your, your different devices. And Netflix is uh, leading that, char uh, that change as we're, we are the world's biggest uh, internet TV network. We offer movies and TV shows uh, with no commercials uh, and the ability to watch as much as you want uh, for one um, uh, hopefully affordable uh, monthly subscription and, uh, and no commitments. Uh, we're available globally uh, today in over 190 markets in every major country except for China and countries where we're not legally allowed to operate like North Korea and uh, Syria. And we have over 100 million subscribers. Uh, of which nearly half our member base is actually outside of uh, the U.S. Uh, our members are also very engaged. Um, they watch well over 125 million hours of videos a day. Um, so this means that we account for about a third of all internet traffic in North America, close to 10% in Latin America, and about 5% in Europe, where we launched a, a bit more recently. Uh, and to support um, all of this streaming, we'll spend over $1 billion this year on technology and, uh, and development to ensure a great uh, streaming delivery experience for our customers. Uh, we actually took our CDN in-house in 2012, uh, which is called Open Connect, uh, and that's now probably the world's largest uh, CDN. Um, our technology budget also goes to support our integrations uh, with our various device partners like Apple and Google and Samsung and LG uh, and Comcast and, and many more. So it's easy for our members to access on, on different devices. Uh, we're also making significant investments uh, in, per, in our personalization algorithms and in our recommendation engine uh, to also make it easy for members to find um, great things uh, to watch. Uh, we are also um, the leading source of 4K um, content, which is pretty amazing uh, when you think probably just five or ten years ago, most people thought about internet vi video as um, grainy and, and constantly rebuffering. So a big, cha a big change is a afoot. Uh, we're also investing a lot in content uh, as well. This year we will spend over $6 billion uh, on content. Uh, and we will also um, debut over 1,000 hours of original programming across 400 um, titles or so. So that's actually, uh, on average, more than one uh, new original uh, a day. And these originals span TV series, original feature films, kids programming, stand-up uh, comedy specials, um, and documentaries. And I think that highlights the, the breadth of the programming that we're uh, uh, building at Netflix. And we're not just about uh, quantity of programming, but also quality as well. Um, our originals had 54 Emmy nominations um, last year, and we also won uh, the Golden Globes uh, for best um, uh, TV, uh, TV drama and best actress in a TV series this year. So really, really pleased and honored uh, to, ha uh, to have that. 
Um, with that, let me uh, shift gears and talk specifically about Netflix InFlight, which is probably what most of you are here to, to, to understand. Um, in terms of um, Netflix InFlight, what we're doing uh, with this program is that we are really bringing the entire Netflix uh, service and experience to passengers at 35,000 feet in the air. And it works just like it does on the ground or at home for you. And what that means is passengers can access Netflix um, from their personal devices like their smartphones or their tablets or their laptops. Um, and they have the entire catalog available to them. Uh, we're not supporting uh, onboard caches or back of seat rest systems, um, but rather the Netflix services um, stream uh, directly over next generation satellite networks like K-Band or, or 2KU. Uh, in terms of our business model, um, we don't charge our members any sort of additional fee um, for in-flight access and non-members uh, can sign up on board for our standard 30-day uh, uh, free trial. And the idea um, behind this program is that by partnering together uh, with airlines, we think we can create a win-win um, for both parties because when you combine a great internet connectivity uh, with Netflix, you can really drive improved uh, customer satisfaction uh, for both parties. Uh, for Netflix, you know, the benefits are that it extends um, the value of our membership to our customers and it encourages more viewing, uh, which has a positive effect for um, our retention and our churn rates. Um, also, by surprising and delighting uh, guests with in-flight accessibility, we think it, it's, a, it's a real positive for our brand. Our airline partnerships uh, also help build uh, awareness for our original content and I'll walk you through some examples of that um, shortly. And then we also do acquire some new members uh, through this channel as well. Uh, with respect to airlines, um, our partnership can, uh, partnerships uh, can help generate awareness and excitement for their investment in next generation uh, connect, uh, connectivity uh, systems. We also work in partnership with the airline as well as their um, network provider or connectivity provider to ensure a high quality streaming experience. And then um, all these things work uh, in concert to help improve the customer satisfaction, uh, likelihood to recommend, and, and net promoter scores um, for our partners as well. Uh, and then lastly, we think by working together, uh, we can help build a sustainable business model uh, around low cost or, or free in-flight uh, Wi-Fi. And the, and the idea here is that um, the, the, it's a really powerful um, notion uh, around um, um, low cost connectivity. Uh, and our basic premise is that the more affordable you make uh, in-flight uh, connectivity, um, the bigger the, the business impact for you. Um, what that means is when you price it affordably, um, the more and more people will actually experience what great in-flight connectivity feels like and looks like, and therefore it'll have a bigger business impact. Alternatively, if it's priced too high, very few people will actually try it. Um, and therefore the investment in uh, um, airlines are putting into these systems um, won't get the sort of maximum uh, benefit. And the, and the people that do sign up and, and try it at a high price do, uh, can feel nickeled and dimed. And we think that ultimately the technology trends are moving in the right direction uh, to support this business model. Satellite capacity is growing, uh, KU capacity is growing, Viasat just launched Viasat 2 I think last week, uh, and Marsat is obviously building out capacity as well. And then at the same time on our end at Netflix, we're working on more and more efficient encodes uh, to make streaming delivery uh, more efficient. So, you know, in the reasonably near future, we'll be able to deliver uh, a DVD quality stream to mobile devices for 250 kilobits a second. Um, so that's sort of the, the big picture um, idea. And over the past year and a half, um, as we've gotten Netflix in flight, uh, off the ground, so to speak, no, no pun intended. Um, we're, we're proud to have partnered with many different airlines. Uh, we've partnered with Virgin America here in the US and uh, um, Aeromexico uh, in Latin America uh, in, this in this capacity. Uh, in addition, we recently launched with both Qantas and Virgin Australia uh, and have signed others that um, are not, not yet announced, so, so uh, please stay tuned uh, on, on that front. Uh, now I'm going to uh, shift gears and um, talk a little bit about some of the um, partnerships and some of our early learnings uh, from these partnerships. Um, our business um, development partnerships, the way we see them in Netflix is, you know, they're, they're multifaceted, but one very important aspect is the marketing. And we do leverage our Netflix originals uh, in this regard. Uh, our Netflix originals are a great marketing tool um, for our partners because with shows like House of Cards or Stranger Things or Orange is the New Black, um, we give you, uh, our partners new stories to help them engage with new and existing customers and to create a real emotional connection. 
um, and our partners across a wide array of different industry verticals like retail, tech, telecom, have really embraced this content-centric approach to, to, to marketing. And with respect to airlines, our airline partners are, are no different. Uh, for example, when we launched Netflix in flight with Virgin America, um, we had Michael Kelly, who, who plays Doug Stemper from House of Cards, do a special uh, surprise guest appearance at, at SFO uh, to announce the availability uh, of the first Viasat equipped uh, Virgin plane. And on the day of uh, launch, the Netflix onboard hashtag um, generated 8 million impressions, and our uh, analytics show that uh, the, the social media sentiment was universally positive. Um, similarly, when we launched um, Aero Mexico after um, we hosted a launch event uh, in one of the hangars in Mexico City, but then we, along with Aero Mexico and GoGo, flew the press on um, uh, on, a pl on, on an Aero Mexico plane to Cabo, where they could actually experience GoGo 2KU firsthand uh, and stream Netflix um, in real time, including the season four um, uh, of Orange the New Black, which actually coincidentally uh, launched that same day. And then once we arrived in Cabo, um, we, along with Gogo and Aeromexico, hosted the press for lunch at, at a restaurant called Manta, um, which is owned by Enrique Olvera, uh, uh, who's the celebrity chef on one of our award-winning specials called Chef's Table. And Enrique is, uh, also happens uh, to do the menu for Aeromexico. So that was a really sort of um, organic way to tie in Netflix and Aero Mexico in a way that felt very authentic um, to our mutual customers. And here's just um, an example of an in-flight safety video we did in partnership with Aero Mexico. It's in Spanish, but um, I think the, the message is uh, pretty, pretty straightforward. Bienvenido a este vuelo de Aeroméxico con Netflix a bordo. Para tu seguridad, mantén el respaldo de tu asiento en posición vertical y asegura la mesita ubicada frente a ti durante el despegue y el aterrizaje. Coffee table. If you cannot abide by this request, we'll arrange for a nice little spot for you to sing upon your arrival. También recuerda ajustar tu cinturón cuando la señal está encendida. Te solicitamos que guardes tus pertenencias en los compartimentos superiores o debajo de tu asiento. In the movies, there's always this thing about astronauts. They come out of the field or something. Is someone going to tell us about that? Sí. En caso de emergencia, coloca la mascarilla que caerá frente a ti sobre tu boca y nariz. We're supposed to have landed already. Recuerda que los vuelos de Aeroméxico son espacios libres de humo y está prohibido fumar. It's a security issue to us. Water. Puedes utilizar tus aparatos electrónicos en todo momento, siempre y cuando estén en modo avión. Do you understand now? Gracias por tu atención. Esperamos que disfrutes tu vuelo con Aeroméxico y Netflix a bordo. Awesome. Great. Um, glad the video worked. You never want to be the guy at Netflix that can't get the video to work. So uh, thanks to Greg in the back uh, for, for making that uh, happen. Um, so just to kind of continue on, another example of one of our in-flight partnerships is when we launched with Virgin uh, Australia in April of this year. Uh, Virgin offered their passengers as part of the, their launch event the gift of three months of, uh, of a Netflix subscription uh, to both new and existing uh, customers. So we're finding lots of interesting and different ways to uh, partner together uh, with airlines. Um, but it's also more than just about the, the content and the marketing and the offers. In our partnerships, uh, we also work to ensure uh, a good streaming experience. We monitor and track several different quality of experience metrics, uh, including uh, what we call uh, play delay, which is the average number of seconds between when a member clicks the play button and when the video starts. And obviously you want to have that number be as low as uh, possible. Uh, we also track the uh, average number of rebuffers per hour, uh, which is how frequently the video stops and has to reload, which again is not a great experience, but again, and, and you want that number to be as low as possible. But we work together again with um, the connectivity provider and our airline partner to make sure that those metrics are healthy and they deliver a great experience um, to, to our mutual customers. Um, and as you can see here from, from this article from Gizmodo, um, the reporter here wrote, um, Netflix is streaming without a hitch, uh, great quality, no buffering. Uh, this is better than my Wi-Fi in the office. Um, so always happy when uh, we get that feedback. Um, so I'll wrap up uh, my uh, prepared remarks um, with some of the key learnings we have so far from, from Netflix in flight. I'd say what we find is that engagement is, is, uh, is really solid. Um, of those passengers that do stream, they stream over an hour uh, per account. 
over 20% of, um, of, of Netflix um, accounts that stream on the airplane are repeat users of it, so they've streamed on more than one flight. Um, and then an overall usage, I would say, is fairly varied by, by airline and, and dependent on, on many different factors, uh, one of which is um, the number of planes uh, or the percentage of the fleet that's uh, upgraded to next generation connectivity. Um, not surprisingly, we also find that engagement is highly correlated with um, flight length. So the longer the flight is, um, the more likely um, people are going to uh, stream. And, um, and so uh, a lot of different um, uh, interesting sort of takeaways from, from that standpoint. In terms of device usage, what we're finding is that mobile devices like smartphones and tablets account for um, the most uh, amount of viewing hours. Uh, but viewing hours per account is actually highest uh, on the bigger screen uh, devices like laptops and tablets. Um, so uh, we also track what people are watching uh, on, on airplanes. Anybody want to take a guess on what was the most streamed show over the past month on airplanes? Close, that was number two. That was season five. Of, uh, was... Any other guess? Archer. <laughs> That one's not even close, <laughs> uh, but uh, it was uh, 13 Reasons Why, actually. Um, so anyway, a uh, little trivia there for you. For you. Um, so um, the other uh, um, thing I wanted to highlight is that our Consumer Insights team has also done some uh, primary market research uh, on the impact of our airline partnerships. Um, and what we found is really interesting. When consumers find out that an airline like Virgin America um, offers Netflix uh, with free internet, um, there's a significant uplift in their likelihood to fly, a 30% uplift uh, amongst all travelers, and actually a 58% uplift um, among, uh, among uh, business travelers. Um, and then uh, lastly, we also ran a ticket choice uh, simulation and, and conjoint analysis um, that presented consumers with different uh, flight options and amenities like, um, um, like frequent flyer miles, um, different lengths of trip, different um, ticket prices, different um, options for baggage uh, fees, in-flight entertainment, and, and streaming video. And what we found is that by including um, uh, Netflix, uh, leisure and business class travelers would actually pay $5 and $14 more per ticket, respectively. Um, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, it's not as big of an incentive for consumers as frequent flyer miles, um, but it was an interesting sort of takeaway in terms of how um, that could actually um, help pricing power. Um, so with that, um, that concludes my, my prepared remarks. Um, not sure how much time we have left, but if we have a few minutes, I'm happy to take questions. Just curious, why, do you, why is it important for the entire experience to be streaming? You could have a big server on board that has some of the library and stream some of the rest and make the economics, you could accelerate the economics that way. Sure, um, so a couple reasons. Um, from a, from a customer experience perspective, uh, we want to deliver the entire service, not some sort of subset of Netflix, um, because that's their expectation level. Um, when they click on the app or want to access Netflix, what we don't want them to have is, how come this show in my, lit, in my queue or my list isn't available? It's available at home or it's available on the ground. Why isn't it available on, on the plane? So that's one sort of key consideration. Um, second consideration is, with respect to an onboard cache, we've yet to find one that's big enough to house our entire library. Um, so we're, you know, we're probably talking you need at least six terabytes, um, sort of minimum, um, to, to deliver that. Um, and at the end of the day, I think we are big believers in trying to skate to where the puck's going, not to where it is today. As you heard me say, we ultimately think that um, capa uh, satellite capacity is growing, prices will come down, and also our streaming delivery is actually getting more efficient over time. In terms of streaming delivery efficiency or in terms of other sort of technology? In yeah, so I'd say in, in general, we're, we're really focused on improving the mobile experience. Uh, and part of that is tied to the fact that in January of 2016, we launched in uh, um, basically the rest of the world, 130 countries at, uh, at once. So we're now in markets like India, uh, where the broadband infrastructure is obviously not as robust as it is here 
uh, in the U.S. or uh, in Western markets. So we're spending a lot of time improving the overall mobile experience. So in addition to making the encodes more efficient, we are also making just the um, mobile app uh, better. Uh, we're trying to reduce the load time um, when you open the app, for example, and we made some real progress there and reduced the, um, the load time probably by about 30% uh, over the past year or so. So a lot of, uh, a lot of things like that. Um, but mobile is probably the main focus. Uh, Zaf Manan, Cactus Hero. Uh, I'm interested, interested to find out um, about um, your model uh, compared to the model where uh, instrument is provided on the aircraft through an onboard server. Uh, there's a lot of uh, planes flying around with that system, yeah. and, but yours requires a connection to the ground. Maybe there's a, a, a fee to be paid for that connection, etc. So have you done some studies comparing the two models? Yeah, so I think it goes, it's a similar question to the gentleman's first question. So um, as I mentioned, we stream directly over the satellite uh, network today. Uh, we don't pay for bandwidth um, uh, on, on the airline either. Um, and um, was there another um, sort of aspect to, to that question? Um, uh, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, uh, passengers, you, you had this uh, point uh, earlier in your presentation regarding keeping the price low, etc., the, the low cost as aspect yep. of this. And what I'm saying is that here we have a passenger sitting in a plane, he's got the option of, of having to pay a few dollars to get access to Netflix or other uh, services provided via that link, or to fly an airline that doesn't need that. You go on, on the plane, you've got lots of movies to watch, maybe mm -hmm. not as many as Netflix, yeah. but you know. Plenty of movies there to watch. Yeah, so it's a really interesting, I, I get it. So the, the kind of question is really what's the trade off between um, offering, say, connectivity plus Netflix versus um, I, traditional IFE uh, on an onboard uh, sort of server. So look, it's, you know, obviously people have different perspectives. My, my, my personal perspective is that, you know, that's probably for most airlines a loss leader, right? Having that. Um, having IFE stored uh, on an onboard cache. So it's, I find it somewhat interesting because a lot of our conversations with airlines center around like bandwidth costs and like how much is it going to cost if everybody streams, you know, Netflix and this and that. And then, you know, uh, I get on airplanes and it's like I have all these movies for free, right? And so my, my guess is the, um, it's a really good question. My guess is that in a couple of years, you'd probably cross a point where connectivity costs and, and, and given the usage stats that we're seeing, is probably gonna be cheaper for the airline than actually investing in, in IFE. Uh, this is a general question. How do you see the future of the linear TV? Do you believe that's gonna be a combination of linear and, and OTT, or linear is gonna step by step uh, you know, decrease? Our general view is that linear will um, become smaller over time, uh, mostly because the on-demand viewing experience is just a lot more convenient for most people. Um, as I said, you can basically watch it whenever you want, wherever you want, on any sort of device. So sort of the notion of linear TV that you have to um, you know, be there at a certain time is, I think, A, inconvenient and starts to feel antiquated. The way I, I in my other role, you know, when I speak to investors, the way I describe it is, it, you know, if I describe linear TV as like, if you want to watch a show on linear television, but you have to be there on a certain day at a certain time, and if you're not there, it's not there. Like that's already starting to feel very sort of antiquated, right? From a, from a consumer experience. Um, so look, linear TV, I think is really good for live sort of events like the Super Bowl, um, the Emmys, the Academy Awards and things like that. Those are relatively um, sort of few in terms of the sheer number of events. So look, we think linear TV will, you know, will become smaller over time, just as broadcast television became smaller as cable grew. And really the big trend is that internet TV will continue to grow um, probably for multiple decades. Um, a lot of times uh, the airlines are integrating um, their IFE with their mobile app. Are you actually directing directly to the Netflix app or are you going through another app with the airline? Uh, it's directed to the Netflix app. This question combines a couple concepts because you, you talked about having a high quality streaming experience at 240 kilobits, which is very good. Um, and you talked about the intersection of the cost curve with IFE. Um, so the question really is, 
is that 240 kilobits partly a function of screen size or not? Because it, once mm -hmm. you get to a certain screen size, that disintermediate, then there's no other decision in the yeah. customer. That's right. So um, um, the 250 kilobits uh, number I quoted for, for that encode is would be a mobile encode. Um, so it would be for mobile devices. Um, you're right. So um, it probably wouldn't look great. Um, at 250 kilobits on a 60-inch smart TV. Uh, the good news is people aren't carrying 60-inch televisions on the airplane, so that, that's a thought. Just to follow up, I'm going to be landing on the wall. Yeah, um, so we, um, we don't have any, uh, at least I'm not aware of any sort of specific plans for a for laptop, but um, we, today you can get a, a good DVD quality picture in flight on a laptop at 750. Are there plans to expand the downloadable content that's currently available uh, with the recent rollout that allows people to use their own devices in airplane mode? And how will that potentially affect streaming moving forward? Sure. Um, so the question is, um, uh, will we uh, in, um, increase the, the, the number of titles available for download? The answer is yes. Um, so that's growing every day, actually. Um, but we don't view offline mode as um, mutually exclusive to these airline partnerships um, for a couple reasons. Um, first, as you said, not every show or every movie is available for, for download mode. Uh, offline mode also doesn't address the use case when the consumer actually forgets to or doesn't pre-plan to download the, the show or the content before they get on the plane. And then thirdly, offline mode doesn't address the non-member base experience. So if you're on a plane and you're not a Netflix member and you're bored and you're looking for something to watch, um, these partnerships are the answer for that. Do you do any customization in your Netflix app? For example, multiple people watching a same movie, do you send multiple streams to the airplane? Uh, yes. Um, so each, each stream is individual, individualized, yes. Um, Spencer, over the last few years, we've seen some hotels adopt uh, Netflix services in, in substitution of you know, pay-per-view. Yep. Um, what has been the response, or, or have, have you, what's the response from hotels to the take up of this service? How have they, is there a financial uh, incentive for them to get rid of pay-per-view and go with a Netflix service? Yeah, I would say well, we, we don't offer a specific financial incentive for, um, it's similar to our airline partnerships in the sense that they're just looking to improve their guest experience, right? And they're looking to improve customer satisfaction. And what they find is that, um, there are customers that use Netflix on the on the TV in the hotel room are more satisfied. They have a more satis um, they have a better guest experience. So that's really the main driver for for them. I'd say you know it's uh, really encouraging. We have a partnership with Marriott, and we're definitely getting a lot of interest from other hotel operators as well. Um, you know, some are looking at, for it as a replacement for linear TV. I would say most are not. Uh, most, con most continue to view Netflix as, you know, a complement to their linear offering. Um, and really it's driven not by a s sort of specific financial incentive, but by the sort of guest experience uh, benefit. Can we give Spencer a big round of applause for a great presentation? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.